Hey everybody, Mr. Love here. Um, today we're going to look at a uh, physics problem um, that is uh, is on the AP level, um, AP Physics B level, um, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, centripetal force, um, radial forces, um, and the components of those forces, and what it looks like when uh, when you solve for some of those things. Um, in this particular problem, we're looking at a uh, a train, a high-speed train that uses uh, the tilt of the cars to negotiate curves. Um, this tilt's adjusted such that um, the passengers really just feel a normal force, and it allows the passengers to feel less friction um, sliding across the seat. Um, so we're going to look at a train that has a, uh, a velocity of uh, 150 kilometers per hour. Um, the radius of the curve that it's going through is 630 meters. We're going to calculate the friction necessary for the passenger or passenger of uh, 80 kilograms if the turn is not banked um, and it doesn't tilt. And then the second part of the problem, we're going to calculate the friction force um, necessary um, or the friction force on the passenger, rather, if the train does tilt um, 9 degrees towards the, the curb. Um, so, um, so getting started, um, what we're going to do here is put, um, put down some of the variables that we have. Again, the radius is 630 meters. Uh, the velocity is, um, is 150 kilometers per hour. The, uh, the mass of the person we're going to consider is 80 kilograms. And um, the bank of the turn is 9 degrees. So the first thing that we have to, uh, have to do is convert um, the velocity of 150 kilometers per hour into meters per second. Fairly simple uh, calculation. So you take that 150 kilometers per hour and uh, you multiply it by the conversion factor. Um, considering dimensional analysis of uh, 1 meter per second per 3.6 kilometers per hour. And um, Once you go ahead and do that, um, you find that the velocity of the train is 41.67 sec seconds, uh, meters per se second. <clears throat> the um, the next step, the part A that we're going to look at, is um, the situation where the uh, the friction is supplied entirely by um, the seat and the person, um, so there is no banking, there's no tilting, and if um, if you do that, um, everything is supplied by centripetal force. Okay, so the, the friction um, must match up with the centripetal force. So the radial force is equal to mass v squared divided go ahead and substitute the numbers into that. Um, so 80 kilograms, again, the velocity that we're using is 41.67 seconds. Um, and uh, that's squared, be careful of that. And that's over 630 meters. Once you do that, you find that the, uh, the force, um, or the frictional force necessary um, of the passenger is 220 newtons. Um, and so that's the force necessary, or the, the force that the passenger sort of withstands if the turn is in bank. So for part B, um, things get a little more complicated. Um, so now we have the, uh, the train being banked um, at some angle, and, uh, and that angle is, is 9 degrees. So the first thing you're going to want to do is draw a, a free body diagram um, and look at um, the components of the forces that are, uh, that are at play here. So at first you have the uh, the mass and gravity force pointing straight down. Um, then you have the, uh, the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. Um, and you have the frictional force, which is acting downward on the slope. Um, notice where, um, where the angles that we're looking at, in that free body diagram is, is obviously more than 9 degrees. Um, but what we're looking at here um, is where these thetas are, uh, are where the angles are so that uh, we can start calculating the, uh, the component forces. So where these red dots are, that's, that's where the angle is between the normal force and the frictional force um, that we're, uh, we're going to be using. So the, um, the first thing that we need to do in, in any one of these problems is um, solve for the forces in the different directions. And so um, the first thing we're going to do is solve for the force in the y direction. And um, when we do that, we find that the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to Fn, the normal force cosine theta, um, minus mg, minus Fr sine theta. The 
we solve that for um, Fn, because okay, we're going to be using that later on to substitute in. So we get Fn is equal to mg plus FFr sine theta cosine theta. Okay, that's it for the y component. And we know it's zero because this car is not moving up or down. Okay, it's only being pulled around the, the turn. So once we do that, we're going to go ahead and sum up the, uh, the x components. And for that, it looks like this. We have fn sine theta, right, the, uh, the x component or the radial component of the normal force, plus fr or fr um, cosine theta, and that's the radial component of the uh, frictional force equals mass times velocity squared over r. And again, that's accelerating, right? This is in the, in the radial direction. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make a substitution, bring what we just solved for in the uh, y component, where we said fn equal to something, and bring that into the fx. So we make that substitution. Um, we get mg ffr sine theta um, divided by cosine theta. And that's multiplied by sine theta. Um, and we go ahead and add that to FFR uh, times cosine theta. We fix that. It's not an equal. That's a plus is what that should be. So it's plus. sine theta equals mv squared over r. So we can go ahead and, uh, and do some algebraic rearranging now that we have that formula. What we're going to do is um, multiply both sides by cosine um, to get that out of the denominator in the beginning. So you get mg FFR sine theta times sine theta. And that is added to FFR cosine squared theta. that whole thing is equal to mv squared over r. Um, again, we multiply both sides by cosine of theta. Going even a little bit further, um, we have that FFR is equal to uh, the mass times um, v squared over r cosine theta minus g sine theta. Now you can um, go ahead and, uh, and substitute in some of the numbers here. Um, 80 kilograms um, for velocity 41.67 meters per second, and that's squared. And that's over 630 meters. times the cosine of 9 degrees minus gravity 9.8 meters per second squared times the sine of 9 degrees. And when you do all that math, um, you should come up with the, uh, the force of friction required now in the bank configuration um, is about 95.1 newtons, 95 newtons. Um, and so that's the amount of that's the amount of friction um, that is now required um, if, the, uh, 
the uh, if the train were to be banked, and notice how it's substantially less than the uh, than the 220 newtons that we saw for an A, um, and uh, less force means happier passengers. Thanks for watching.